Welcome back to Summer Solutions. In the first half, we talked about those renouncing their own citizenship or seeking another national passport. But what about those wanting to establish their own nation? Well, that's happening with BitNation Pangea, the world's first virtual nation, a blockchain powered jurisdiction. Time now to talk to Suzanne Tarkowski Tempelhoff, the founder of BitNation. Suzanne, welcome back. Hi, Max. Thank you for having me again. Stacy, welcome back. BitNation Pangea, I like this. There's a geographical apartheid, and we can end it. What does yeah, this what's mean? that all about? Well, if you look at how the world is constructed, you know, we are randomly born into geographical areas, and that's not a choice we make. We're just randomly pooped out there, basically, right? And then, based on that very arbitrary thing, we have different kinds of governments, different kinds of op economic opportunities, which we can choose ourselves. We have no power over those decisions. Um, and, you know, to judge people on the basis of their passport that they randomly got, is basically as arbitrary as judging people on the basis of their skin color or their sexual preferences or anything else. It's completely arbitrary, but it affects more than you know 80% of the population of people who didn't happen to be born with a passport that allows you to actually travel, right? The problem with our world today is that money has the freedom to roam, but people do not. In other words, anybody, you know, people in America can send money around the world, or people in the United Kingdom in the banking sector can send billions around the world in an instant. Nobody's checking the passport of the money. But if they try to go to these countries, they're stopped. Uh, if you want to go to another country for some reason, uh, it's, it becomes increasingly more difficult, especially in the surveillance state, the global uh, prison state, some call it. Uh, so why shouldn't we have the same rights to move around the globe as our money? I have no idea, Max. That's a question I ask myself every day. But that's part but, of the reason why we have such global inequality, of course, is for m most of human history, humans have been free to move wherever they want. Look at America. It's like uh, an immigrant nation. Mm. Um, but capital was always restricted, and capital used to be a little bit more real and used to be based on gold, and that's why a lot of uh, nations, that's why they didn't want uh, so much free flow of capital, because they didn't want to lose their gold. But now it's the opposite. Capital can go anywhere uh, labor can't, and that ha puts uh, labor at an obvious disadvantage to capital, who can just say, well, we don't like you, we're going to pick up a move. Uh, uh, people can't do that. Uh, but how does BitNation survive that? Okay, because Everybody's heard of the DAO, uh, but you're a DV, DBVN, a decentralized, <laughs> borderless, virtual nation. Tell us about the structure. Like, what is the actual structure? How does how do I become a citizen of Big Nation Pangea? Um, okay, well, there's no barriers to entry, so anyone can join, and anyone can join and create their own nation, actually, based on our DBVN principle, right? And they can set their own rules, whether they want to be democratic or autocratic or holocratic. So they can whatever. Choo you can choose to be autocratic. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, and you can also choose whatever code of law you want. If you want civil law, common law, Sharia law, Pashtun Wali, whatever you want, right? So we take no kind of moral high road saying, oh, well, you have to live like we do or else you're out. Right, so but, like the, that. Uh, just, but it's all connected on the back end somehow. So the structure with right. BitNation is you're, it's a service provider, essentially. You're providing a service to create a, a nation on the blockchain. Well, we have the base protocol, yeah. The base protocol. Yeah, which is open source and anyone can fork and create their own. Right, you, you fork the protocol to create your nation. Right. Mm. Oh, well, you don't have to fork it to create your nation, actually. We will enable ourselves where you can create your nation within our nation. Right. Okay. So, so most of the, uh, you know, we often hear, heard of utopias back in the 70s. There would be either anarchic utopias uh, or a commune with a communist, and it was very strict about what you're allowed to do and how you're allowed to behave. Yeah. And this, so you're mm. saying, like, this is just... A new concept. You can, if if you know, British people like their queen. Uh, American people, well, they're starting to more like we're sort of powerful <laughs> families like the Clintons and the Bushes. But uh, you know, they have a different system. So everybody want they could choose the, their own sort of system. Yes, of course. I mean, if you know, people think that uh, you know, free market anarchism, for instance. Uh, implies a certain economic model or legal model. It doesn't. Huh? You can be a, on a free market. You can choose to be a communist, or you can choose to be a capitalist, or you can choose, you know, to follow whatever code of law you want. Right? The only thing it implies is that you have the freedom to choose whichever preference suits you the best. Huh? So much of running a, a state has to do with verification. 
So you have right. all of your paperwork, your 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 passport, as you mm. mentioned, your birth certificate, you know, your all marriage of the marriage license, marriage license, like the that. bureaucracy of these things, mm. and it, it spawns institutions, and it spawns a uh, huge bureaucracy, and it spawns uh, certain institutionalized thinking, and you have these large organizations, and large organizations tend to be slow moving and not very creative. So with BitNation. Uh, I, uh, the verification is is dead simple because it's on the blockchain. Right. So exactly. I don't I don't need all these other institutions and all the infrastructure to no. verify who I am or where I've been or what I part of what my nation is all about. So mm -hmm. my national identity has to do with my cultural identity as well and my my identity of what it is to be in this. I mean, you mentioned Sharia law, for example, could be part of the code of a nation that you start on BitNation that, that's now a, a, a religious, sure. has a religious overtone, so sure, I'm identifying with yeah. this, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so that identity process is now codified within the blockchain, so that's a huge money saver. You, you end up with a lot of mobility. So who are the big losers on this? I mean, I guess the over- Nation state governments. <laughs> yeah, nation state governments. Lawyers, the nation, the lawyers bankers, obviously. The nation state does <laughs> seem quite old fashioned in, it our, does, in right? a globalized mm -hmm. world. It seems bizarre it's that like we have- It's like the postal to... offices in a wall of emails. Right? Yeah, and yeah. even in America, going through this election, you know, presidential election season, yeah. you just think like, you know, a lot of Americans want to live like Denmark or Sweden, the Swedish people do. Mm -hmm. And then an even bigger percentage don't, and they want to have more like Somalia and zero government or zero. But it right. seems like, it seems kind of unfair that, uh, you know, people aren't able to live the way they want to live or live with the infrastructure well, that they want. I, I think that one of the big problems is people have this inflated view of democracy, right? They think, oh, it's democratic, so it must be good. But the way I perceive democracy is that it's a one-fit-all model, it's a coercive model. So just because you're outnumbered, it means your rights will be stripped away from you, and you have to live under a model that you have not chosen. You know, culturally speaking, you, you have now a nation and many nations, and they are interacting in a way that you don't have the state. And with the, without the state, of course, you would not have, let's say, an organized police force. You would not have military. Mm -hmm. And so interaction amongst people would be guided purely by on an emotional human level. Because so much of interactions between humans are guided by the fact that nations are at war. You know, the nation state needs to feed, uh, it needs to be profitable. So they go to war, right. so then it forces people to take sides. I'm, I'm, I'm on side. You're on that side. Now, if you get rid of the nation state, you get rid of the military, because, and they're not making wars, and I don't have to see people as either friend or enemy, then it's more, you, you have a different cultural experience, right? You have a different birth of, is it a renaissance? Is this the new yeah. renaissance? Is that what we're saying? I do hope so, yeah. But, you know, I, I think, uh, yeah, as opposed to the nation state, so if you in a nation state setting, you generally go to jail, right? And that's the kind of punishment mechanism, if you like. In a post nation world setting, you wouldn't go to jail because there would be few enforcement mechanisms like that. But instead, you get your reputation downgraded. So basically, the ID and reputation system is the preventive method uh, towards crime and kind of punitive right. method. Right, the great thing about a, a sociopath operating in society right. is that they're able to maintain their reputation while committing a crime. Let's take Jamie Dimon, for example. Okay. Sociopathic banker at J.P. Morgan. He commits massive amounts of, you know, bad behavior, but he's a charming sociopath. So his reputation does not diminish. If he were living in a bit nation, living in, the, in this paradigm, his reputation, the fact that it would drop and he mm. would have the, have the consequences of having a lower reputation because uh, apparently in, the, in, this, in this paradigm, uh, being a psychopath doesn't work. Well, no. Unless your nation is committed to psychopathology. <laughs> yeah. But I like that idea. That used to be kind of how our world ran before the modern nation state is. We didn't have these prisons because nobody wanted, the, the, the king had all the money and he didn't want to spend all this money, uh, you know, On running days. a whole advance. Because yeah. he was losing money. So he'd be like, you guys deal with it yourself. But, um, you know, I, I thought of Moss Def. You yeah. know, the rapper who got arrested mm -hmm. flying into South Africa oh, with a world passport. Yeah. Uh, were these, uh, do you give passports or would this actually be uh, uh, presumably the U.S. Uh, going through JFK? You, they wouldn't uh, accept a BitNation Pangea passport or, or would they? Well, we actually worked a little bit on the refugee crisis with of stateless people. Um, so we do issue IDs, not passports. So it's a big difference, right? Um, but would you comply at least for movements between, between, in between uh, European Union countries? Would you comply with the basic 
uh, EU standards, you could move with them, but then it's a, it comes down to like the local office or border office or to accept it or not. So that's kind of beyond our control, right? The, the trick is also to get one uh, geographical nation to recognize you, like the United States was recognized by Morocco first and then other nations followed. So if you get, so maybe go to Morocco, I don't know, if well, you get somebody, that begins the process of, I, I think Palestine's also trying to go through that thing of being recognized as a nation state. Liberland. Well, Liberland. Well, yeah. yeah, but they are not recognized. But <laughs> but we do, we do have a partnership with Estonia. Um, oh, okay, yeah. And we'll build a public notary together with them. So they, they, they provide e citizenship, right, to anybody in the world? E-residency, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we work together with them. And, um, you know, they publicly stated that they find it very exciting that nation states are now comp competing on an open market uh, with virtual nations, such as BitNation. So, you know, I don't know if that classifies recognition, but right. that they are openly talking about how the world is evolving and how we and them are part of it. So. Right, so you have uh, 4,000 citizens in 100 countries, and what's the growth rate of this? Where do you see this going in another few years? Obviously, everyone wants to be like Zuckerberg, right? But <laughs> um, I mean, it's well, really he has a nation state. He has Facebook. Yeah, that's a, a Facebook well, nation. It's the biggest. It's the biggest country in the world. Yeah, it has three so, billion so, people. So Sunda just said that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. Um, well, also, um, before we uh, go, I want to say, you know, taxation without representation, speaking yeah. of America, was a rallying cry for that. That is what, how they ended up, uh, you know, renouncing what they had before and, and starting their own nation state. Here, we have a world of taxation without representation again, because it's been proven over and over mm. that our democracies, actually votes don't matter at all. It's Completely corporations. Yeah. Everything is about the military industrial complex, the big pharma complex, mm -hmm. all of these things, they get what they want and you don't. You're stuck as a citizen trapped in your borders. But he, that's a, a, a same exact point as hundreds of years ago, taxation without representation uh, to start a whole new nation. Yeah, exactly. I but mean, do I you tax? Uh, no, we don't. I mean, at the moment, we have a kind of pay-for-services basis. Most of the services are free for citizens. And if they do pay anything, they pay for the actual service they use, right? Um, we may have, we may come to have voluntary taxation, but that works more like kind of mutual insurance, right? So, for instance, you can pay into, you know, a mutual health insurance, and you pay a little bit every month, and then when an accident happens, then you get more money. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the way we see taxation as well. So if, for the ones who are willing to pay a little bit every month for when they need something, then, you know, so, so it's more taxation on a kind of, in a mutual insurance realm. Not voluntary, not for, by force. Exactly. Great. Let's go. Let's do it. Bit Nation. Yeah. I'm a Bit Nationer. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this episode, Summer Solutions, with me, Max Kaiser. I'd like to thank our guest, Suzanne of Bit Nation's Pangea. If you'd like to leave us your comments on the solutions presented today, tweet us at Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.